man. What's the deal? Man, how you doing, man? You know, out here quarantining. I would have my mask on, but... I mean, man, I got mine in the car, man. I got mine <laughs> in the car, man. <laughs> hey, you know, I put the mask on yesterday. Yeah. And uh, it was hot in that boy. I said, I got I got to breathe. Man, crazy. me and my fiance was saying that we in Walmart, like, this is... It's hard to keep it on, man. It is. <laughs> it's hard to keep used, it on. You got to get used to it, man. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah man. Well, yeah, we like I said, man, this is going to be on um all streaming platforms. Uh... My producer Q gonna have it on everything afterwards on okay. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everything. That's that's live. I appreciate yeah, man. So um, yeah, like we got Maurice Elrod. He's a director, writer, and a creator, and he do a whole lot of other things as well. <laughs> yeah, man. I try. You know what I'm saying. So we gonna start off, man. Like you said, you were talking about the um <clears throat> the coronavirus, and we gonna go ahead and start off with a uh, salute me while I'm here, man. Usually we take this time to salute somebody while he's still around and not wait for somebody to. Pass away to give them they you know what I'm saying flowers give it to them while they can still spell them. So no who is one person who one person in mind you want to go ahead and give a, a shout out to? It's oh uh, man, it's, it's hard to do one person, but I would yeah. always have to just give it up to Mom Dukes to my sure. mom. Um, you know she been holding it down for for a long time. I'm 41. Yeah. See, you know what I mean I got the grades <laughs> all that. Yeah, so yeah. I, I say my I say my mom's. Um, you know, strong woman, man. She she raised me and my sister by herself. You yeah. know how that go, man. So oh yeah, I already know. Sister, for sure, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what's up. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. How how she doing during this whole little uh pandemic, man? Man, you know my mom's man trying to keep her in the crib. She be man. wanting to make runs. I'm like, like I go for <laughs> you. You know what I'm saying? Or you yeah. can ride with me and just sit in the car. You know what I'm saying? Man. It's, it's hard, funny. man. It's, it's hard. funny. You know what it is, man. It's funny when you have parents that are older, um, and that's, that's, that was, that was kind of silly. Your parents are older, right? But as you, as you get older, it's almost like you become the parent to your parents. No, you for real, that's tell, true. You gotta tell them what to do. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's so, true, dog. That's very true, that. man. But you, man. Let's start from the beginning, man, a little bit, man. Just touch on, um, it's funny, you growing up in Chicago, we got the, you know, MJ Doc coming on this episode uh, 23. Uh, uh, I can't wait <laughs> to see it. Me yeah, too, man. man. So, like, just growing up, man, tell me, like, the early days, man, mom, dad, brother, you said, well, you said you had your sister. Like, how was yeah. it growing up? Chicago, for me, you know what I'm saying, was uh, was like any other, you know, in the city or whatever. But, you know, Chicago, a tough place. I played basketball, um, you know, grew up around, you know what I'm saying, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of gangs, so gang infested. But yeah. I just popped this hoop. For me, that was like the thing that kind of kept me out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. That's the, the fact that like I respected my mom so much. Even when I would think about doing something grimy, I'd be like, yeah. my mom is going to kill me. You know what I'm saying? So that's the same and, thing with me, man. Like, I yeah. always like, man, if I be out too late, my mom's going to come with the belt, man. Like, for real, my mom played no, no, no game. Yeah, I don't want no problems. And my mom, like, 5'3", you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you a little bitty lady, but <clears throat> she ruled with an iron fist. So I would say that for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about like with your dad? Did y'all have a relationship growing up? Like, was he in the picture? Um, I always say this about my father. Like, he, the best thing about him was that he didn't really, he didn't really do much in the sense that like he didn't help out financially. Yeah. Um, but my mom never like talked bad about him, so I didn't yeah. have like no disdain in my heart for him as a kid growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, I I was never disappointed by him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As well. So I think that yeah. that's big for a kid. My dad was never the type of like, yo, I'm going to come pick you up on Friday and he never show up. Well, I'm going to buy yeah. you yeah. and he never do it. So he just didn't do anything, which is, you know, which was... And a lot of times, though, like, like that make you, um, that make you a, a better father from when you, you know what I'm saying, grow up and have kids of your own. For sure. For sure. So yeah, I didn't have that. I didn't have that on me. You know what I mean? So I was able to, you know... Uh, you know, not have that dark place. I know a lot of a lot of a lot of young folks have when they're dealing with their parents. Yeah. Um, especially when you got one that's talking down on the other one. Yeah. I, ain't never, I ain't never go through any of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like me and my oldest son, man, like me and his mom not together, but I never say a bad word about her. She don't I don't think she talk bad about me. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything's you know pretty good, man. We we real good at co-parenting, man. I'm cool with her husband, she cool with my fiance, so everything's yeah. good. Yeah. That, and that's yeah. the way you gotta be, man. Like you don't want to just be like constantly talking junk. You know about your your kid mom and like that's kind of I don't know that's not good. Yeah, man. it's not good because they they they're too young to process it. 
Yeah, they, it, you know whatever they want to feel when they get older, that be they feel as once they get older. That'd be them, exactly. Yeah. You know, so growing up, man, like Chicago hooping, man, like just hearing different stories from different Chicago uh, uh, people, man. Y'all had some ballers for real, man. Like I listened to Quentin Richardson, um, yeah, uh, podcast. Yeah. And, like I was hearing him talking to D D Wade and stuff. D Wade wasn't really highly recruited when he was coming up. Yeah, so yeah, I, man. So I went to, I went to uh, Hales Franciscan. Um, it's all boy black school, man. And we had a lot of talent, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we had a lot of talented dudes. Um yeah. our coach, our coach to me was was kind of uh kind of iffy because he didn't really have no discipline about himself as far okay. as how he relates to the players. You can't let a you can't let a, a 17, 18 year old kid just do whatever he wanna do and then and then start him the next day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. You got you gotta be able to have some type of structure. So I think the fact that we didn't have that. Uh, that's why we didn't go far. So Q, so Quinn Richardson was kind of like in my, I think Q was maybe a, a year younger, but we had Matt mm-hmm. Gervin, um, Corey Maggetti, uh, yeah. Bobby Simmons. Like, I remember you know Bobby Simmons. We had, we had some dudes, man. So Chicago, like like I said before, man, it's a tough place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're you, you going to play, you going to play with some heart, you know what I'm saying? Some passion because that's just kind of who we are. Um, yeah, we gonna man. grind. We gonna grind it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, and we play ball all the time. Like, so you're gonna be at like the courts nowadays is just empty. Yeah. Not back. Not not back then, man. We was hooping at the park all day every that, day. That, that's where you get your heart from, cause you never really had like no trainers to come and sit down. All these cones, you know. Oh, uh, ain't no trainers. I don't even know what that is. Like, like yeah. that's like that stuff is weird to me now. But I guess the game has changed. And my oh, neighbor yeah. going, my neighbor going crazy. Hey, hey I was about to say, I thought that, I was like, did that your little one going pale? Man. So anyway, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's why I see, you see, I had to come in the car because that's how my four-year-old is, man. He'll be in that boy all in the video like he did, man. Going nuts. And I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to be in the crib. So I got to get some, I got to get some, 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 some light. But yeah, man, <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much what it was, man. Just growing up, man, you had to be, you had to be tough. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, couldn't for be sure. no, couldn't be no punk out there, man. And you know yeah. that's what it was all about. You know that's so why I be on my like, son head yeah. about that same thing. Like you gotta have that aggression and toughness. Like I, uh, for instance, that uh, Pat Bev, he from Chicago. Like yeah. that dude was all heart. Like for real, all heart. You know what I'm saying? Like that dude. That dude. I, I'm I, obviously Pat is younger as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the thing. People be talking about how Pat Bev can't score. I guarantee you, you pick up Pat Bev in the pickup game, he's gonna give you 40. Yeah, for sure. For you know sure. So it ain't yeah. really about that's, that's what he's doing in the NBA. He has to yeah, play that. He's playing his role. Exactly. Yeah. So, so with you, man, as far as like you know, you you uh did you play like varsity like all four years? He started off as a freshman on the freshman man, team. Hell no, nah, I ain't played varsity <laughs> all four years. That's that new age stuff, man. You I know because yeah, yeah. A lot of people start off, they don't have to, they just go right in there on varsity. You know? Nah, man. I'm gonna get in the car too. Yeah. Um, so so no, it wasn't it wasn't uh it wasn't uh varsity. I think freshman, yeah, I played freshman, freshman. We didn't have like no A, B, and C, you know what I'm saying? But I played freshman. And it's crazy because my uh my freshman year coach is Mark Davis, who okay. is an NBA ref. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that, so that was freshman year. Sophomore year, I think I played uh, just regular, like, I think like a sophomore team. Mm-hmm. Um, then I played varsity my junior and senior year. Okay, okay. How was it for you, man? Like, after you um was done with high school, like, did you get a lot of offers? Like, how was that? Man, no <laughs> offers. Man, dang. Your boy, you know what I'm saying? So, like, what happened was, it's crazy because, like, you know, back then it was different, you know. Um, I didn't even play AAU. Yeah. And, you know, so, like, I think about if my dad was around, because my dad played basketball, you know, maybe he could have steered me in a better direction because my mom really didn't know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I ended up playing, uh, like I said, I played varsity but didn't have no offers. And okay. I probably could have played, like, maybe Division two level, but I ended up going to a D3. Yeah. So I went to a D3 out of, in Ohio. Uh, yeah, Oberlin College or whatever, man. Play ball there. I did score over a thousand though, so that means yeah. I was a bucket. You know? What I'm yeah, saying? for sure. Yeah, I was yeah. Left hand band buckets. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, played there 
for, for like I said, for like four years. But then it's crazy, like as a basketball player, I don't care what level you play on, I don't care where you come from, we are some delusional individuals, bro. We be thinking sure. that we're going to the league no matter what. Always, always, <laughs> always, so, dog. Like so I'm thinking I'm going to the league, and it wasn't until like my junior year. Uh, I was gonna like, say when did it hit? When did it hit? Like, all right, man, just let me be real with myself. Junior year in college, yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm playing a Division three. I probably ain't going to the league. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about another plan real Let quick. Let me think about this. So what I ended up doing was um, I had – I wanted to be around basketball, though. So that was the biggest thing. I still wanted to be around the game. And yeah. I ended up – there was a guy that went to my college who already graduated uh, named mm-hmm. Dave Bender. Okay. Talked to my friend Dave Bender. He's from first Chicago as well. So mm-hmm. Dave – I met him through other people, you know what I mean, that um, that went to the college as well. Yeah. So I hit Dave up. I was, I was hitting him up every day. Well, he worked at N1. Okay. He was on the NBA side. Yeah. And um, I hit him up, like, every day over email. I was calling him. I was trying to get an internship, you know yeah. what I'm saying, at N1. And so I felt like that, to me, was me still being around the game. For sure. And, uh, being very, very pers- like persistent with trying to, you know what I'm saying, get that opportunity. Yeah. And it happened, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was able to intern with N1. This is during the height of the mixtape era. Yeah, for sure. And That's when you're going uh, to foot ash and getting the tape every time it comes out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, but real like, quick story, man, about the tape. I remember um some Jordan 11s came out, the cool, great Jordan 11s. Okay. So I go to our mall in Detroit. Uh, it's called Eastland. Okay. So I'm getting the, um, I'm getting the shoes. And everybody waiting in line, but I have to go home because I don't feel like waiting in line like for an hour or two. So I go home. Oh, this is my freshman year of high school. I come back. When I come back, they let everybody in. So everybody okay. rushing in the door. So once I get <laughs> in, like it's 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 mayhem. It's crazy. So I asked the lady, like, I'm a, I'm a, I just tell you how small I am. I'm I'm short. I'm like, you got a size seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, yeah, last, last, the last um, uh, um, adult size, you know, once you were seven and a half, your adult shoe. I'm like, bet, cool. She gave me my cool gray 11s. I gave her the money. I'm happy. I'm like, oh, man. I told Malcolm, my brother, I'm like, we got to go get the N1 mistake before I leave. Okay. So once I'm walking there, I got my, my, my Jordan bag. And I see some dudes scoping me out, man. <laughs> and I, I know what time it is. Yeah, I know what time yeah. it is. Now, I stay right across the street from the mall in these apartments. Okay. So, only thing I got to do is get home quick. So, you know what I'm saying? I go get my N1 mixtape. And when I'm walking back, I'm like, I, I tell the security guard, like, hey, man, I think they trying to get me, man. Like, can you watch out for me? <laughs> so, as soon as I get out the door, man, me and Malcolm just runs home as fast as we can, man. Like, people was was getting hurt over those shoes. A friend of mine oh. got stabbed over those shoes. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah that, man, was, uh, that was uh, that was something that was happening, you know, uh, in Chicago as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, so crazy. like those those M one mistakes. I remember just me and me being at home and, and trying to like every move after I watch it, man. My favorite one was the first mistake with Skip and the third one with Hot Sauce. Yeah, the hot I think the uh the first two, it was like, oh okay, this is what they're doing in, in New York or you know, New yeah. Jersey or whatever. And then I think when volume three came out, it, it let the world know like or, or at least the country at that time, no, oh, this is happening all over. You know what I'm saying? This is oh, Atlanta, yeah. and then AO in Philly. Like, it was like, oh, this is crazy. And so Man. getting that opportunity, that, like, changed the course of my life because I was able to travel all over the country, all of, went overseas. Yeah. Uh, and it's still, it's still being around basketball. And at that time, I felt like and one had – uh, it wasn't obviously on Nike's level, but it was it was it was getting up there. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, to the point oh where yeah. It was a true competitor. I just felt that internally we didn't value what we had, which was the streets. Yeah, we were trying yeah. to still be, um, you know, NBA focused and and doing things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? And it yeah. just didn't really pan out. Um, because you can't you couldn't compete with on the NBA side. <clears throat> With, no. with who they got, who they had at the time. You know what I'm saying? You obviously have a, 
LeBron and, and Jordan obviously was still. Yeah, um, Iverson. Iverson was obviously with Reebok, but it was like the the N one dudes was more popular than any NBA player at that time. Like we would go play. Man, what, yes, man. It was I crazy. Knew all of them, man. Hot sauce, Professor A Yo. Yeah. Man, uh, what's my name? High octane. Like I know people that people didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It was it was it was crazy. So you know, that was a, a great time in my life, man, and being a part of that. And um, still, you know, that was early two thousand. Here so I am. That's what you were, still. So that what you sauce, were, bro. Is that what you would say went wrong with N one? It was them trying to have a competition with the NBA instead of just feeding the streets like you like yeah, supposed to. Yeah, for sure. Because our our direct, um, our direct consumer, you know, was everybody that did make it to the NBA. And that was, yeah. you know, 99% of the world, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. you looked at those guys, you looked at the N1, it became a situation where you would watch the N1 guys and you would have aspirations to be able to do that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And not necessarily the NBA. It was like, man, I want to be on the tour. Yeah, and that was yeah. like some some dudes' dreams. Even when we start doing the the competition, and yeah. how everybody would come out to be a part of it, that man that changed professors' life. You know what I'm saying? I remember telling Fest like, "Bro, I don't know if you understand what's getting ready to happen, dog. Like, you about yeah. to blow all the way up because you got like you because you old. yeah because he a white kid from a from a white area playing around all these urban dudes and he can and do all them. the same shit. Yeah, yeah, crazy. killing them. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, like, I knew that that was going to be, for him, like, are oh, you about to take off? And even still to this day, like, he's still he's still yeah. doing his thing, like, so. Yeah, because my, my son, who's 13, he be on his YouTube channel looking at, you know, every time he posting little videos and stuff like that, so he's still relevant. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, he, yeah. he's, still, he's still doing his thing, like, and he. So, he I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you had talked about this, but what was your role with N1? Like, what was your position? Yeah, so. So the, the 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 corporate title was director of player relations, mm -hmm. but in all actuality, man, I was the glorified babysitter. Man, I had to watch them dudes on the dogs, <laughs> everything like wherever they were, I was. You know what I'm saying? And at the time, yeah. which was crazy, I was like 22, 23, maybe. I was young, and all them yeah. dudes were way older than me. But yeah. I will say this: at that time, I was able to instill some level of structure around the tour like yeah. it was it was i had a fine system i put in place you was late okay, for appearances okay. i was gonna hit that pocket and you know that's how if you're gonna get fined that's the only reason why a person's gonna change their behavior it's like oh he's gonna take his money out of my hand so i'm gonna go ahead i'll make sure to be on time because at at one point in time it was they were just hooping then it became yeah. like a legitimate business we had all kind of sponsors you know what i'm saying mountain dew and Yep, yep, mobile, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Frito Lay. Yeah. So it's like you can't you can't operate and still be late or you know what I'm saying, come into the appearance of this smell like weed. Like you gotta take it up and not yeah. I, I instilled a lot of those different, you know what I'm saying, rules and regulations within the tour. And, okay. Um it was it was it was a good ride, man. It was dope. Man, and then I'm sitting here just like as you talk, man, I'm thinking about like everything they had kind of like started. They was the ones putting on Hip hop artists that you might not have known on the mistakes. Yeah, they was here with the with the with the slogan T shirts, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling like you, they it, had, was a, it was a game changer, dog. Yeah, they even had a video changer. game like <laughs> three hoops. We had a video game, you know what I'm saying? And it was, if you think about it, those guys were before their time, because now, you know, Skip even was viewed differently during that era when he was in the NBA. So he had to kind of almost dumb down his game just to man. be able to play in the league. So can yeah, you imagine yeah. Skip today? No. With the stuff that we see <laughs> with the stuff that we see John Morant and Trey Young and, and Steph Curry do. It's all skip. Got, it's all skip. I yeah. guarantee you if, if Kyrie, I guarantee you if you talk to those guys about, you know, how they where they learn that stuff from, I'm sure they got some N1 mixtape at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Yes, man. Yes, and, man. And, and, you know, Skip was kind of penalized for it because it wasn't necessarily the right thing to do. Um, yeah. But now, fast forward, everybody's doing it. And, and even from the music, you go to any NBA arena, it's going to be all yep. hip-hop. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. Like, and see, man, and one, and one was like, yeah, that's all we was talking about for a good two or three years. And 
even with Skip, man, like the moves he was doing, I remember following his career when he was with Milwaukee. Like he really didn't get that much playing time until he got to I want to say Orlando. Orlando. And they played them, man. They, they played them in the championship. They jerked them. No, my man was hurt. He was hurt the whole playoffs. You gonna put uh, uh, Jameer Nelson Jameer in Nelson. when he was, everything was working? Like, <laughs> like I, I still talk to Rafe, and I've never asked him that question. But I'm going to next time I see him, I'm going to ask him that question. Like, how did you really feel? And I don't want no political correct answer because yeah. that was bogus. They that was some bull. Because you know. Man. I'm the biggest Laker fan ever. Kobe, my favorite player at the mic. Like, and I'm like, dog, why would y'all take Skip out the rotation? Like, y'all crazy. Jameer, like, that Jameer Orlando Jameer. team, that Orlando yeah. team. They could have, they, 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 they should have won that. They should have yeah. won that. They had a, yeah, they had a legitimate chance to win that, but they, they, they jerked them for real. Um, now, but yeah, that time frame was crazy, man. I mean, we had, we had um, opportunity to sign G Unit. <laughs> what, what, for real? People don't, yeah, man. People don't know that, man. So fifty did fifty did a spot for us with Stefan Marbury. Yeah, and this is before this is before um, Jay Z started doing the. Uh, I think Jay Z had already launched the uh, S. Doc Carters. Okay, if you remember S. Doc Carters? Mm-hmm. Then it was then it was a G Unit sneaker under Reebok. Yeah, but right. The, yeah, back to that. Yeah, but the people, the people in the the older guys, the older statesmen at N one, they didn't believe in that. Yeah, they, they didn't. Dang. They didn't believe in Fifty Cent. Just think about that. Like That's it's wild. crazy how like it's important to have young people around you because they just know more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like with I music, talk to, I talk to my everything. Yeah, like they just know because they have they have they have that they have time to. To really do that, like while we older, we you know we got jobs and we take care of family and bills and all that. But yeah. my son is nineteen, so yeah. if I'm going anything music wise, like I know he got, he know the answer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's, what's and it's hot, funny you, you say that, man. It's funny you say that because like my little brother, we are seven years apart. But when it came like Meek Mill, Drake, like he put me on first early. Yeah, yeah. Because so we don't. So you we don't know. Yeah, so that's, that, that's to, true. That's true. Yeah. So even so even within business. You need to have young people around you because they're going to know what's trending, what's popping, what's whack now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, and yeah. when that situation came with 50 and G Unit, they should have hopped on that. That's they crazy. Hopped on it. <laughs> that's a true story. And that's something I did not. Man, that's crazy, bro. True story, man. Could have got, could have got the G Unit sneaker. Heck yeah, were, man. So I know I, I asked you what um. You, you, what was your thoughts as far as like what ended N one? But what could have saved N one? Before you answer that, I believe like, um, didn't y'all have like KG or something? Yeah, so KG was a um a, a NBA guy. Yeah. So if you, if they wanted to reach the NBA level and have an NBA person endorse N one, I don't believe they should have went with a big man because big men never sell shoes. Never. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It, it, was, it was a bunch of like fundamental things that I felt that we just did wrong. Um. I think, you know, corporate greed obviously takes its place as well. Mm. But when we were in those 5,000 seat arenas where, you know, basketball is all about energy and emotion, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. if, I'm, if I'm in a gym where it's, it's a, a only fit 1,000 people, but, but we got 1,500 people in there, oh, yeah. it's, it's going to be a dope-ass game. So oh, yeah. that was one reason we started going to the NBA arenas. And you know how that is. It's 25,000 seats. Yeah. We're only still fitting in 8,000. So that's all this empty space. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The only markets that we really um, sold out still was the Garden, obviously. We were oh, based yeah, yeah. in Philly. We're based yeah. in Philly. So in Philly, that always worked. And in Chicago. Everywhere else was just kind of like hit or miss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was that was an issue. And then, you know, it's, it was a lot of backlash, too, obviously. Everybody like, I don't really want to do that and one stuff. And like I say, it's crazy because fast forward, that's what everybody's doing. You know what I mean? Everybody. Everybody, yeah. man. I remember I was throwing it all people's head, man. Like, <laughs> Trey Young said like, he ain't never going to stop going between the legs. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, man, for real, man. Because wasn't got mad at Trevor Reese. Like, come on, man. Like, he just got you. <laughs> <laughs> he just got you. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I would say yeah. those things. And then, like you mentioned with KG, obviously he's a Hall of Famer, a great player, but basketball-wise, yeah. it would have been better. It would have been better to give that shoe to AO or a professor yeah. or a hot yeah. 
and maybe you sure. do maybe you do a regional launch you know what i'm saying yeah. where you know on the west coast you got the professor down south you drop the hot sauce shoe like Duh, that man that be better. that would been way mm-hmm. dope then man that would been dope for it. i remember yeah. having me a pair i had a couple pair of n1 shoes the half and half we got half black half blue yeah the, half the black, half red. Yeah, yeah 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 so i be yeah. man with I got my games and stuff. And I throw my N ones. Oh, I'm thinking I'm really an N one player for real. <laughs> like man, the worst idea. I'm glad I didn't go through with it. I was gonna get my first tattoo, and my first tattoo at the time was gonna be the N one logo. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't do that, my G. Man, but the way it was, I was gonna split it up. Now you know, the N one man got no shirt on with the hoop yeah. shorts, so half of it was gonna be. The N one man with the hoop shorts on and stuff, and the other half was gonna be business, okay. like with the with the suit and the uh, suitcase. So it's gonna I forgot what it was gonna be around it, like half man, half business, or something okay. crazy. <laughs> but you know what's funny I'm, though? A lot of people have that N one logo on it. Man, logo, I'm so body. I'm so happy I did not do that, man. I know Fest Fest got one. My college roommate. My now, see, roommate professor, it's cool for him to have it. Right, because he's part of the, yeah, he's part of it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But, uh, but yeah. yeah, man, that's funny as hell. That's man, funny. so, not, like, with, um, just to go back a little bit, with, just hooping with them, did you ever get itch to say that I can play with N1 team, or? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, like, I, I recognize where, uh, I, we played, we obviously played, and when we would play, um, we would play for real, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. we're like, nobody was even trying to do moves. But I was, yeah. I was hold my own. Because like yeah. I know how to play basketball, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for so, real, yeah. Uh, but doing all of that stuff, hell no. Now, if if and one was so big that mm-hmm. if they decided to put me out there and they could have called me slow mo, I yeah. would have been just as popular. It was hey, it's funny. I was gonna point. say, I was gonna ask you. I know you had N one name, but that was it then, huh? No, like I, I'm, I just made that up off the top of my head. Like, yeah, yeah, nah. I'm just saying, but if you would have gave me any name, like yeah. I would have been just as popular because it was a machine. It was almost like during that time when Rockefeller, you know what I'm saying, was really, you know, moving with state property. It's mm-hmm. like they could have put anybody on Rockefeller and we all was going to rock with it because of oh, yeah. the name. It was it was a machine at that point. And it's crazy, man, because, you know, talking about hip hop and you listen to my G-Unit and N1, like all that was in the same time with the, with the rock. Uh, um, um, state property, G yeah. unit, and one like that's when like hip hop and basketball was just colliding together. Allen yes, Iverson sir. with Jada Kiss, yeah, with those commercials, yeah, that. man, yeah. So, uh, just one more thing about N one, man. I know we said that Skip was playing in the league. Who was another player that you felt could have held his own in the NBA from N one? Um, or players? Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to, got to go with players. Um. I think AO. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. AO's one of them dudes, man, where like he didn't even really work out. He was just yeah. naturally gifted, you know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't no gym rat. Yeah. Um, but AO could, could run a team, handle the ball, play out a pick and roll, could hit the mid range shot, could get to the rim, could pass. Mm-hmm. So I would say AO for sure. Um, and he had the mentality too, you know what I'm saying? He was a dog. Uh, yeah. I would say prime objective. So my man Lonnie, the same, like Lonnie like six, seven, six, eight, handle, yeah. could shoot it, had a little weird, unorthodox type of style, but like was super efficient, could shoot the ball from anywhere. Yeah. And that's the crazy part about it. Like I seen these dudes do stuff in, 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 in games, like the very first time they tried it, it worked. Yeah. Like, so yeah. like even with even with 50, I don't think 50 could throw the ball off the shot clock. Yeah, with precision, you know, yeah, what I'm for real. in the yeah. game, like it wasn't like, yeah. like I ain't doing this, it's crazy. <laughs> so, um, I would say AO, Lonnie, and then the last one I would probably say, man, is probably uh, rest in peace, man, Ali Bo. I think oh, Al, yeah. I think yeah. Al had the, the tools, you know what I'm saying? He had the work ethic, you know what I mean? Like, Al was, yeah. Al was nice, man. And that's another thing about it, like, a lot of dudes passed away from that tour, man. Yeah, I'm about to say Escalade. Flash, rest in peace, Escalade. Escalade. Yeah, and Al, man. So man, you know how hard it got to be to be Escalade and do the things he was doing at that size, though. <laughs> like for real, like that was crazy. He was dunking, like Big he could boy. move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dang, Mark, it was Mark. Yeah, for people who don't know, that's Mark Jackson's brother Mark Jackson, as well. Little brother. Yep. No yeah. doubt. 
That's wild, man. All right, man. Just stay on the basketball tip, man. You got the uh the grind machine. The right? grind machine, man. So for any okay, so, that are out here, go ahead. Oh, what's it? What's it? Oh got? no, I was gonna say like um first explain what it is and 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 second explain how did you get involved with it. Yeah. So uh grind the grind machine is a portable. It's the first portable shooting uh, uh machine for basketball players. Okay. And when I mean portable, I mean actually portable. It collapses and folds down to a duffel bag. Uh, it weighs about 100 pounds. Obviously, it have, has wheels on it, so you can wheel it and move it around. So you can yeah. take it to your driveway. So the, obviously, the biggest thing about basketball now, as far as training is concerned, is you having to rebound your own shots, right? And so hey. you do, there's, there are obviously competitors that are out there, but their machines are either way, way more expensive um, and it's 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 big as hell. Like, where do you actually store it? Yeah, so exactly. I say fold down to a duffel bag. I mean, it collapses down. You know what I'm saying? You can put it in your car. You put it in your garage. You have it in your living room. Wherever, wherever you can move it around, basically. Okay. Um, I'm so I'm so wild by this story because the the young fella that created it, man, was 19 years old when he started the process. Yeah. And so one thing we understand about business or just in life in general, like everybody has an idea, right? But the execution is what's going to make or break you. You know what I mean? Sure. He's, 20, he's 24 years old now. So you're talking about five years later. And it started out with just the concept and him learning how to weld and teaching himself how to, you know, engineer certain parts of the machine. And then just built yeah. a team around it. So how I got involved was kind of crazy, man. Um, Maybe like two years ago, I met. Okay, so I went to I went to an Astros game, Houston Astros game, baseball game, okay. and uh, one of my guys had gave me the plug on some tickets or whatever. So yeah. the guy gave me the tickets. I go to the game. So after the game, I hit my dude up. His name is Nate. I hit Nate up and I'm like, "Yo, thanks for the tickets. I want to take you, you know, what I'm saying to lunch or dinner or something like that for you know, appreciation." So yeah. we went. So. He's a tech guy. So we talk in and, you know, he brings up the grind. Yeah. And prior to that, though, grind basketball was liking all of my pictures. Yeah. yeah. Grind basketball and Thomas Fields. And okay. so, you know, like everybody got these weird, you know, Instagram names. But yeah. if Thomas Fields keep liking your stuff like every day, I'm like, who? Like, who is this dude? Yeah, yeah, for real. So then he mentions him in the meeting. That very night, I reached out to Thomas like, yo, I heard about your project or whatever. Like, let's, mm-hmm. let's like, link up. And we yeah. met, we met, like, two days later at Kane's, and we've been rocking that ever since. It's, like, two years ago. And yeah. um, it's been a crazy process. I've seen several different versions of the machine come through. Um, okay. And to kind of get to where we are. You know, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a grind for sure. It's been a marathon. It's been a blessing. I mean, all those things, a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. But it's a, it's a great product, and it's affordable as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the machine costs like fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, it folds down to a duffel bag, man. And um, you know, basketball training is gonna be at its all time high. So for man. us, we're looking at it like, and we have other. We want to be able to do other sports too. So yeah. not just basketball, but this is the first product. Um, yeah. And we launched first. We launched March 1st. Um, got a bunch of sales out of it. Did a little promo video with, with the professor. We did uh, yeah. uh, a, a podcast interview with Chris Broussard. Yeah, I, got, I, I saw that. Chronicle, you know what I'm saying? So, like, we just, we got a call actually today at 4 o'clock with an investor. I'm like, I don't care if it's Sunday. Let's get it in. You know what I mean? We, yeah. on, quarant- we on quarantine. <laughs> for real, for real. So I was gonna say, have this um, have this virus kind of like messed up you guys' rollout? Not at all, man. Honestly, I mean, it, you know, I think uh, you got to always try to take the half, the glass half full approach. Yeah, so yeah, for, for sure, sure, for sure, you know, people are not moving around and stuff like that. But one thing is for certain, you got a lot of eyeballs. People are at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh want yeah, to, want to learn more about the product, hitting us up, asking us questions. Uh, we dropped a couple of videos, and for us too, it's all about the like, storytelling as well. Yeah, you know and we want to be able to to uh, to have that impact too. So no, nah, not yeah. not really. You know, we haven't really looked at it like that, honestly. Okay, and what was your like when he first brought you the idea? What was your thoughts? Because with me, 
like that would have been so helpful as a as a young and having somebody oh, ha- having something give me the ball back and I don't have to worry about the guys. That's, that's hard when you shooting and you by yourself. You gotta get your own rebound. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to take a thousand shots and take a thousand hours because you gotta exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because one thing so about like, shooting, I, I, I pride myself on being a shooter still to this day. I can still get it up. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. I still got. I can still get a bucket. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, you know, like you said, when you're shooting, shooting is is all about timing and rhythm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. if I'm shooting and I'm locked in, focused on the rim, and I shoot it, and I and I got to go get my rebound. So then I gotta, you know, now I'm unfocused, and I have to lock oh, yeah. myself back in when I shoot the next one. So it's mm-hmm. all about being able to stay focused the entire time. You know what I'm saying? And, and especially if you're saying like. If you got at the house, you know, the driveway, you shooting it. What up, going All over the place and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's up, professor, man? Yeah, so, like, if you got a machine that you know it's giving me the ball where I want it in my spot, in the pocket I want it, man, that's that's a that's a changer. And then, like, even just you saying it being in a duffel bag, you got to look at different teams. Like, if an AU team right now at a gym, if you got this big old machine, where are you going to put it at? But if you got that, you, you can just put it. Yeah, you can just take that right on with your basketballs and everything up. Yeah, man, that's the... That's the that's the beauty of the project. I mean, the product, man, it's, it's crazy. Like, and it's it's crazy. Like, when people see it for the first time, they like, oh, like I didn't know I didn't know it was gonna be able to, like, it open up and expand and be the full regulation size of a shooting machine. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the design is real, real sleek. It's it's, it's clean. Um, mm-hmm. people love the product, man. So I I think we're gonna have some success. I'm about to so, say, I think with this man, y'all can really like target those high school teams, AU teams. I, like, I'm going to talk to my athletic director and see if we can go ahead and purchase it, man, for real, for real. Cause... Yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing. See, see what happens. So, like, when Trey was in high school, most most high school programs only have one machine. Yep. But if you think about it, they also have at least eight or nine teams within the whole entire basketball program on the boys yep. and girls side. So, you got freshman A team, B team, sometimes C team, then you got the JV team, then you got the varsity team. Yeah. Well, shit, if you only got one machine, you know what I'm saying? Like, how can I How can I get shots up, right? If I yeah. really want to, you know. So it does eliminate that, and um, it gives people more access because you're only as good as your uh, your, your, your um, uh, 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 repetition. Yeah. The more yeah. you do anything, you know, and obviously if you're doing it the right way, you're going to yeah. get better at it. You know? Oh, yeah. For sure. That's why I tell my son, man, just like with this whole virus and us not being able to go to the gym, he's I'm like, man, push ups, sit up, stay in the shape, going outside, dribbling in the ball. Yeah, that's all you can do. You know, because right saying? now he he's going to eighth grade. So I say, man, I just being real with you, you might not play basketball again until your ninth grade year. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it might it might not be a school year next year. Like if if it is, the only way I can see it working is if you eliminate so many people coming to the games and just narrow it down to the parents. That's it. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be weird. All, man. Like, I'm just trying to think about how they're going to do that. Yeah, man. Again, like it's gonna... Basketball is about and basketball is about energy and crowd. Crowd participation, and, man. Yeah, you need that. So I don't even know how. <clears throat> like, yeah, playing pickup, you don't need it because you. I don't know why it's just playing pickup. But yeah. if I'm playing in an actual game and like there's nobody in the stands, yeah, it's like, like I'm gonna be confused. And that's the thing: as bad as I want to see basketball, I don't know if I want to see it without fans. You don't want to see it. We don't want to like, see it. Yeah, it's like that's, I don't know. This season might be a wash, man. It might be over, man. That sucks too. <laughs> you might be right, man. I don't know. I don't know. I know, man. Because it's, it's hard, man. Because my Lakers finally could have got them a rain. Now I might not even see it. Dang. <laughs> nah, they, they weren't going to win. It's okay. That's another, that's another, hey, that's another yeah, topic that's for another, another day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay, oh, so with the ground machine, like you say, you say it's affordable, 1500 Because I know I was looking at machines when I was coaching. It was like $3,000, $4,000 for something that's going to be right there in the way. You might not have no storage space for it. So that's a, that's a great price for a great product. Yeah, great price, great product. And like you said, even if you want, if you bought that machine for four racks, you can't take it nowhere. You can only yeah. use it in that gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, how do you transport that to another gym if you want to take it somewhere? If you got to have some manpower, a pickup yeah. truck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's so outside. Yeah. Outside of the makers, who who else? Like, is it just you and him that's involved with this? But on like, no, nah, man, no, nah, he got a solid team. So I'm I'm just doing the the marketing side. So I'm a, a director of marketing on that. 
Um, but he has engineers, you know, he has investors, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a team effort, you know what I'm saying? And, um, that's, that's what makes it work because everybody is playing their position. Nobody's trying to, you know, I'm not, I listened in. So before, before COVID-19 or whatever, I would go to the engineer meetings just to, just to hear it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just kind of see how things work and operate. But I'm never going there telling them, you know, that they're doing the wrong things. I don't really know. But yeah. if something do, if I if I do get an idea about something, because again, I'm coming from a basketball angle. Most of your engineers aren't basketball players, right? So you gotta yeah. like, if I'm a hooper, I would probably want it to be able to function like this. Exactly. And then, so having that feedback is is, is very very uh, imperative as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. One last thing, man. Since we we were talking about the yeah. training and stuff like that, what's one thing? When the, when the kid going to the gym, you think they should focus on as far as training? Because a lot of times you have these trainers, and I hate seeing it, man. I'll be with my son, and it, I remember looking on the other side. Like, when I when I help my son out, I'm not a trainer at all. I don't consider yeah. myself a trainer. I'm just a coach. That's a whole different thing. Yeah, But no when I train my son, I try to show him, not just tell him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm looking at this one guy. He just yelling at, I want to say he's his daughter. <laughs> he's yelling. But he is not out there demonstrating how to do it. He just yelling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, as a trainer, like, what do you, you know, how you feel like a trainer should go about things and how you feel a player should come in training? Like, should he look for a trainer or should he just do it on his own? That's a loaded question, man. I, I think what happens is this. And I could be wrong, but it's just my, my, my interpretation. Yeah. I think nowadays there's too much training going on it is. to the point where you hinder a kid's chance to be creative and like let their imagination. I'm a big fan of imagination. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. when I was, if, if you, if, if I'm training your son and I'm telling him do this, do this and do this and do that. Well, when the game comes, what if he never did the other stuff? Because <laughs> yeah. you're trying to do what the same thing your trainer been telling you, but it's not working. Yeah. So I think sometimes kids are overly trained. You're not allowing them to be, uh, I guess, free and creative thinkers. They are usually more robotic, and you can just tell because they're just like the whole left side is wide open, but they forcing right because that's all they worked on for the past yeah. two hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like. It's not in their mind. They're not registering, like, just being creative and just free thinkers. So I think as a young person who's training or coaching kids, sometimes just let them just play. Man. And don't say nothing. Got to. Just let them play and figure it out on their own. Because Man. if you don't do that, you're just creating nothing but just robots. You know what yeah, I'm and that's, so, it's funny you say that, man, because I remember my first year. Of course, you're going to go through, you know, ups and downs your first year doing anything. So yeah, with no coaching, I'm, I'm drawing all these plays out. I'm, and I'm in middle school. I'm in middle school, bro. So I'm drawing all this stuff out. And I'm like, I got 12 players on my team. Only three of them is getting it. So let me just take it, take the whole playbook and throw it in the garbage. Throw it, throw the whole playbook away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and let them play. And now my whole focus when I coach, because I had to tell, I hate it. I, I had to bring an assistant with me, man. But I'm like, I just focus on spacing. That's the most yeah. important thing as far as basketball is spacing and movement. You That's know, it. you teach them <laughs> spacing and movement, and and then from there, every it's like it's like uh, it's like learning math. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't you can't understand trigonometry if you don't know how to add or subtract. So it's kind of yeah. like you got to like take baby steps and yeah. teach them and teach them that way as opposed to trying to you know, force feed them all this information. You know what I'm saying? That was my biggest gripe when my kids were in middle school. It's like, yo, y'all running these plays, but these kids don't even know how to play. Oh, yeah, what the play is designed to do, what it's for, well, yeah. nothing. You become a robot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, you could be wide open for a shot, but because the coach said run the play and do all of this, then now... No. Not, not the coach going crazy. Why did you shoot it? <laughs> well, you just told us in the huddle yeah. to do this, that, and the third. So... Yeah. Creativity, man. Imagination is important, and yep. then again, just allowing the kid just to play. This, this play, just as much play as ball, man, just without play. any instructions. Yeah, and just go the thing, dude. When I, once I learned that, man, like kids was loving practice because you just ain't 
you ain't got so much time to prepare for a season anyway. For sure. And you just bring these kids in. So, like, I just focus on that, man. Like, I, man, we a move without the ball. No ball. Just learning how to move without it and stuff like yeah. that. So then once we get in the game, everything flowing, you know if you ain't moving, uh, you going to sit on the bench. If you ain't moving, if you ain't setting no screens, if you ain't passing and cutting, you know what I'm saying? You on the and bench. And see, and that right there has nothing to do with whether you made or missed the shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can I can control that part. And I always yeah. tell like young players, like, don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how you're going to learn to play. But then you have coaches that will get on you for making a mistake. And a mistake is turning the ball over. Well, they're going to turn the ball over. It's a difference if you just give them the damn ball away every time you touch. Now, we got to talk about that. But yep. you try to make a play, you throw it away, I mean, just get back on D. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That play yeah. is over with. Yeah, because my most successful year, man, I've been coaching for four years now, man, was the one when I realized that, man, and I'm like, all right, we hoping. And, you know what I'm saying, we not, we was we was full court, man to man, you know what I'm saying, just, you know, if you get beat, you got to rely on your man to help. You got to help. Switch. Yeah. Yeah, and we you know did what I'm that, Man, that was that was one of my favorite seasons coaching, man. Like, yeah. I was loving it, man. I would add one one thing to your equation. So you said spacing, movement, and I would also add uh, communication. Oh, yeah, So being sure. able to talk. So, like, if you can do those three things, then you're going to be all right. Because you're going to learn thing, everything else. And I keep real with my kids. I don't be like, just because I, I was scoring 40 points a game. No, I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> but no. I, was the, I was the perfect glue piece to whatever – Team I was on, and I'm gonna talk to I'm gonna talk you to death because I'm gonna hey pick right, <laughs> yeah. pick left, you by yourself, you know. Tell me something, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, so content. that's important. Uh, yeah, man. Then like I said, man, I, when I introduce you, man, you do a lot of things, man. Let's let's talk about your uh your director side, man. You just yeah, man. You came out with a uh, short film called Wait, Wages of Sin. Wages of Sin. It's so, funny. So I, I'm gonna say this to everybody that 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 may hear this. I think when we were I'm 41, so when I was much younger, you would always hear people tell you stuff about, you know, focus on one thing at a time and, you know, put your all into one thing. And, like, I realized, like, that's just not how I am. I don't operate. I I can't operate in that fashion. Like, so you mentioned, you know, grind. Mm -hmm. I also got a full-time job. I also do movies. Like, you know what I'm saying? Starting a, a website for recruiting for track an athlete, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's, it's almost like cooking, you know what I mean? You cooking yeah. and prepare the meal, you know what I mean? You got stuff on the yeah. stove, you got stuff in the oven, you know what yep, I mean? Yep. Preparing something, so I'm always cooking up something, or at least I'm trying to. Yeah. And so uh, I'll tell you a quick story. So I was in L.A., this might have been about a year some change ago at a film festival. Okay. Well, before before that, I was at um, a, a kickback at okay. uh, my home my homegirl Stacy crib. Yeah, had a kickback at Stacey Crib. And so Rob Rob Hardy is there. Rob Hardy is a former partner with Will Packer during okay. I think like Rainforest Films back in the day. So I, I've talked to him before over the phone. She kind of put us together. Yeah. He was there. And this dude that was a writer from Power was there. So, okay. You know, okay. It's just small talk. I'm not even trying to like, you know what I mean, be basic. I'm just having a little quick conversation with everybody. Yeah. So, but I see the guy from Power the next day at this film uh, release or whatever, premiere. Yeah. So I'm like, well, shit, let me go bust it up with him some more. You know what I mean? For sure. Let me, let me extend yeah. the conversation. So I go talk to him, and uh, he, so he's like, yeah, you know, I remember me from last night, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he said, so what do you do? So I said, well, I'm a writer. So he said, well, what have you done? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, look, look, look. I was like, oh, I ain't really done anything, my dude. Yeah. For real. So when I when I hit him with the I ain't really done anything, that conversation ended so fast, and I Man. and I felt like this small, you know what I mean? For real. So so I made it a point. I said, you know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna just do it. You know what I'm saying? Do it myself. Yeah. And um and and even more to this story, I went to New York a few times. Uh, shout out to Caroline Robertson. She's a filmmaker. So I went to New York, and like interning with her on her projects kind of helping out like learning just being on set and when i got back from la that time when dude told me that i ain't really done nothing i felt like a little ant yeah i hit her up i was like yo caroline i got this project i've already written it can you direct it for me yeah and she was like she was like no why don't you just do it 
Yeah. So I'm like, no, nah, man, I ain't <laughs> never done it before, man. I ain't going to be able to do it. So she was like, nah, trust me, like, just learn as much as you possibly can. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You're very smart, smart guy. Like, you can figure it out. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool. That's what I did, man. So I just started putting the pieces together. I shot everything here in Houston. Yeah. Um, and for my first project, I will say that I think it came out pretty good. Like, yeah. my response yeah. that I get from everybody is, like, good storyline. Like, visually, it was it was compelling. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It was dope. Like, I, I checked it out. It was, it was a dope piece. Yeah. So, you know, um, and then I wrote it as a seven-part series. Okay. I was actually supposed to shoot part two on um, March 18th. This is right at the very, very yeah. beginning of all this going on. So I yep. shut it down, you know what I'm saying? What's up, Trent? What's up, Trent? My cousin on the, on the line. Um, hey, so, up, you know, I was I was um, uh, I was going to do it then, but I, I, I postponed it and canceled it. So hopefully, we can get it done um, in the next month or so once things kind of okay. ease up. But, the seven part, seven part series, man. So essentially, Wages of Sin is a story about um, a single dollar bill. Um, you know, going through the lives of seven individuals. Yeah. And so within each individual, you know, one of the seven deadly sins are, is revealed. So the first okay. one I did was lust, and the next one was going to be envy, and I'm going to just kind of continue yeah. um, to do it that way, man. So got that going on. Um, I'm working on a, a, a digital web series um, about AAU basketball called The Summer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That should be pretty dope. Oh yeah, I'm for doing, sure. I'm, I'm doing a rewrite right now on a film project called Tradition, um, mm. and it's essentially where you know the, the the top two players in the country go to an all black college. I man, think you need to see that story. It's, from a it's basketball crazy. Stand for it. It's crazy. You said that, man, because I had an uh, interview with uh, Coach Pierre, P- Pierre Brooks. His son, matter of fact, just uh, committed to Michigan State uh, a couple days ago. Okay, but I was saying, like, what if somebody like Zion Williamson had went to like FAMU? No, that's, like, that's like that's that's my storyline, man. I got the top yeah. two kids in the country, and I think that that's a, you know, just for, um, you know, we just need that visual because a lot of times, you know, we just don't we just don't know. We feel that we need to go to their schools yep. to be successful, and yep. you know, all you're doing is really just you know making them richer and richer at the end of the day. So yep. why not go to Howard or FAMU or Hampton? And mm-hmm. get that ESPN TV deal because at the end of the day, we want to see good ball players. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because just imagine, you. like, you yeah. know, what I'm saying I'm biased because I'm from Michigan, but I believe the Fab Five is one of the best. You know, what I'm saying starting five ever. Absolutely. I, but I just imagine all five of them went to a. You know, what I'm saying like that would be crazy. It would have. It would have changed. It would have changed college basketball. And as we see, college basketball is changing every day. You know, yeah, what I'm saying yeah. like. Kids are now bypassing going to college to go to the G League. Kids yep. are going overseas. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all these rules are changing and kids are being more savvy with it. So, yeah. you know, why not go to a black college? Because if there was what, what drove me to this point, there's a documentary called uh, Black Magic. It came on okay. ESPN. I would recommend checking it out. But so this is prior to um, integration. If you were black, you had to go to a black college anyway, right? So yeah. if you think about it, back in the 40s and the 50s, you know, our schools was popping. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You had all the fanfare. But then integration occurred. Then it's like, oh, we got all these high-power athletes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't yeah. want to start coming to our schools. And then yeah. before you knew it, you know what I'm saying, you don't have any, any of those guys going to HBCUs at all. You know what no, I'm saying? No. So, I it think is. it's a I think it's a pretty strong project. That'd be um, dope, I got man. Another, I got another joint um called Make Yourself at Home. It's like a mm. it's like a, a serial serial killer, homeless <laughs> lady. So I yeah. got like a bunch of different books I've been putting together, man. So the film stuff is something I'm very, very passionate about. Obviously yeah. basketball, I have a love for basketball as well. But yeah. you know, like I said, I'm just cooking, man. Just trying to do a yeah. couple different things. And man, like you you saying, like, man, you you was a little nervous at first as far as like when she said you do it yourself and stuff like that. Like a lot of times. I was talking to a young lady um on the last interview, and it's like a lot of times you you being your you be in your own way. You sometimes like yeah, you be too afraid yeah. of the outcome and how people might not respond to it the way you want them to. 
and you won't even start something. Like, even me with this podcast, like, I'm I, I'm always been a I'm a do it type of person. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. And I I never do it though. Like so. <laughs> and the, yeah. I never do it. But you know the crazy thing, man. I told this story a couple of times from the pod is that the one thing that hit me and made me just attack everything was crazy enough was the Nipsey Hustle death because okay. me and him the same age and I'm thinking he a year older and I see the impact that he had in 33 years and that's just going out right. and doing it. So once I see now, I'm like, man, you know what? F all this. I'm about to attack yeah. everything that I want to do. But, like, you know what I'm saying? The, you ain't got, you ain't got one like to live. There's no replays. There's no rewind button, man. Just everything yeah. is moving forward. That's the, that's the only way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't be in your own way. You can have, like, self-doubt and fear. You know, yeah. I remember when I first learned how to edit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Edit video. And I'm like, man, it took me... I had a brand new laptop. I had um, all the Final Cut, you know, software. I had everything I needed. Yeah. But it took me about a good, I'm not even bullshitting, it took me about a good two months just to crack it open. Man. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that happens, you know what I mean? So I know for me now, I mean, I don't think, I don't think in those terms anymore. I have yeah. realized, you know what I mean? Like, you got to just attack it and you got to just put your best foot forward and just knock man. it out. And it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect the first time you put it out there. It's not supposed to be. But like I said earlier, you know, you start execution is the biggest uh, 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 hurdle that most people just don't get over. They have a million ideas, but it's actually taking, you know, pen to pad and then actually putting a plan in place. Everybody yeah, can't that part. I think my um, my fiance, her cousin, I think he's watching this right now, man. If he is... I don't care. He hear it, man. Like me and him, it was supposed to be me, him, and his homeboy supposed to start the podcast. So, yep. you know, cause I um with Q, shout out to him because he the one who had um you know what I'm saying been telling me to do it. I did an interview with him, and I wasn't even supposed to say nothing, but I started answering asking questions. Yeah, yeah. So my man was like, "Hey, man, you need to keep him around." I'm like, "Oh shoot, I'm dope for real." <laughs> <laughs> So um, <laughs> I'll be teasing Q like, man, I made that interview for real, you know? So um, yeah. Um, so fast forward, man, we over my house at Kidback, man. We just moved over here and stuff. And um, I'm like, man, we should, we just talking stuff. And Q was like, man, that'd be nice if y'all do a podcast, all three of y'all. Cause y'all argue about everything. Y'all don't like yeah. the same stuff. See, that's why he laughing because he see it. <laughs> <laughs> so it must be, it must be us three on there. And um. They, they, I, I was every time Q be like, "You ready?" I'm like, "Hey, I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for them." And then one day after the Nipsey John ha- happened, I'm like, "You know what, man? I'm coming over there tomorrow, dog. I got my boy. I grew up with. We doing the interview tomorrow." And he's like, "Man, whatever, man. You, you, you playing around?" I'm like, "Man, just be up at, at 11 o'clock. I'm gonna be over there." And yeah, that first interview it was okay, but compared to the stuff I'm doing now, it's a whole lot better because I'm studying myself. And I, yeah. What up, y'all? It's your man, King Crooked. You already know. You see this in my hand? These are the plugs, you know what I mean? Some of the finest quality earplugs that you can purchase. You can go and get them at gettheplugs.com. Gettheplugs.com. Don't run off on the plugs like plies, you know what I'm saying? Go get the plugs at gettheplugs.com, all right? Peace. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of times, man, I just I know with me myself, man, I just gotta just do it, man. Like my mom, old boyfriend, say, man, he'd be like, don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah, so, that's 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 real. I think it's funny because uh my son is uh, my son's an artist and yeah. uh he started rapping and I remember him saying like he was talking to, to uh, he was telling me about his homeboys like going to the studio. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, we gonna we gonna go on Friday. So I'm like, all right, yeah. all right, cool, you know what I mean? Yeah, and Friday come. And I'm like, y'all, y'all still going? He's like, man, no, nah, man, something had came up or something. And I, and it happened like maybe two, two times. Yeah. And then the second time, I was like, if you, if you really want to do it, you gotta yeah. do it by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. and then before I look, before I looked up, this dude then uh, built the studio in his closet and recording because you can't. I remember. Like you just you just can't wait for people. Unfortunately, like you want to. Yeah. I think team is important. 
Yeah. You need people around you that can help and support and, you know, play their role in position. But, yeah. you know, if you want to do something, wait for the next person, you might as well. You know what I mean? Ain't no reason to be yeah. all that. Yeah, shout out to him. That's my dog, man. But he know he know we supposed to. We I'm still gonna give him a chance, man, because uh, him I'm I'm trying to do something. I'm still gonna do my own stuff as far as like one on one stuff. But I want to once this um virus is you know what I'm saying it's okay for us to come out. I want to do something maybe with him and um a female and just have like a little, okay you know a weekly jump. We talk about different topics that's going on during out the week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just, yeah. Just to have something like that because a lot of times I get spent on interviews like. And then it'd be people coming to me. Like, how you going to ask me to be on and then I don't hear from you anymore? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Like, that don't... Was, but, but, that, but that goes back to what we were just saying. You know, they they not they not ready. You know yeah. they're not They're not ready for it or they they don't feel comfortable in doing it yet or don't want to put themselves out there. Because to be able to do this, this is live. This ain't going to get edited up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to yeah. have, you know, you got to be able to, 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 to. Hey, I'll be ready. I'll be, having my, I'll be having my paperwork ready. <laughs> hey, I saw, I saw the pen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Cause I don't want to be like, like my man's told me when he said the one thing he had like about my podcast is that it's never like a dull moment or a pause moment. It's, stuff, it's always going and stuff like, yeah. and I don't yeah. want that. Like, cause you know, you run out of questions about, Hey, um, so, uh, the <laughs> how's the weather? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, For real, man. So yeah, you got all this stuff going. You got all these projects coming along, man. Like that's that's th with this year, man. Like you just right now, you just doing more more creating than anything right now, huh? Yeah, man. That's for me. That's the the biggest thing. So a project I'm working on right now. Again, I'm just cooking. So grind basketball. You know, um, uh, my film and TV stuff. And I'm trying to get off the ground and having interviews and pitch meetings and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, uh, my daughter runs track. Yeah. And so she's, she, well, this year done. So she'll be a senior in high school next year. Yeah. And um, on the basketball side, because outside of, you know, doing the whole and one thing, I used to do a bunch of like, you know, mixtapes and documentaries and stuff like that yeah. um, in the basketball world. And so the basketball community is different than on the track side, right? So, the track community don't have a lot of opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Nope. It's, not, yeah. it's not overly saturated like basketball is. Okay. And so I thought about this concept of creating um, a recruiting platform uh, for, for track athletes, yeah. boys and yeah. girls. And uh, we're about probably about four, four weeks away from launching the website. Um, it's, it's lane, lane four.com. Right. And so lane four is my daughter's favorite uh, lane to run yeah. in. Yeah. Hence the name. And uh, essentially, though, we're, we're going to allow the players to create their own player profiles and, and help them get recruited. So, yeah. like, just like you said, man, just being creative. You know, how, yeah. how can I, how can you create something that can give, you know, a kid, no matter what, you know, division level they may run, an opportunity? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, 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 man. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. You got to keep. You gotta keep cooking, man. I got some stuff in the in 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 the play in motion and stuff, man. Myself, man. As far as like the clothing line, everybody who got a clothing line at Target's adults. You never see a clothing line at Target's kids. Never. And by me coaching, I'm around kids. My fiance is a pre-K teacher. She's around kids. So if we come out with something, the whole thing it was, you know, like how Boondocks characters are. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted that to be like some like my logo, like with a uh, with a with a with a boy and a girl. And yeah. have them with the with the natural hair, with the tiara on the grill, and the crown for the yeah. you know boy. And then just not just have like that, just have like little um, meanings and little sayings on the front, like um, future president of my own company, you know, yeah, yeah stuff yeah. like that. So if I can just get that and reach out to the uh, to the kids, I think that'd be a, and adults can still buy it, you know, as well. Yeah, but, for sure, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, you know, because my brother, you know, he do his own little thing, you know, the whole little, you know, marijuana thing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my uncle do the whole, you know, east side, west side stuff. I'm like, man, it's a lane for me with the kids. Absolutely. You got to just find your lane and just stay in that thing. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Man, now, towards the end, man, we usually do a thing called uh, Top 3, man. Okay. So okay. give me your um, give me your top, your <clears throat> top three childhood crushes. Top three. Yep. Woo. <laughs> you mean like, real people or like, like, like uh, celebrity crushes as a as a kid? Celebrity crushes. Yeah. 
But I was getting ready to give you some real ones. <laughs> like, like, oh, Felicia Banks, like fourth grade. Fourth grade, back in fifth grade. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I think uh, old girl from um, Saved by the Bell. Okay. Uh, I think her name was Lark um, Voorhees, I believe. Yeah, yeah she's tripping name. now as an adult, man. Yeah, but back then she was tough. Yeah, I um, like her too. Yeah. Let me see. I'm trying to think of some more. Oh, oh, uh, I forgot her. I forgot her. I forgot what show she was on, but her name is uh, Reagan Gomez. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. What show was that? I don't know, but I know because somebody else brought her to my attention. Okay. I didn't know who she was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was tough. And, um, and uh, remember Topanga? Topanga was all right, bro. <laughs> Topanga was nice, man. <laughs> Topanga was all right. That would be my three. Man, man. Because, man, you know what? I think I was too young to like this girl, man. It, but Jay Piggy and Jason's lyric, I had to be about six. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. when I seen that scene with her, I'm like, oh, my God. Look, though, I love Jay Piggy, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's I, funny. I love J. Pig. All right, give me your top three hoopers ever. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh Jordan, Jordan Penny and Iverson. Yo, yo, Penny, man, Penny was a beast, man. Yeah, that was my guys. All three of them was my guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, top three hoopers uh today. I like uh I'm gonna go with some young some younger fella. I like Ja. I like Ja Moran. Yeah, I like Ja. I'm a big KD fan, regardless of what everybody wants to say about KD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, for real. <clears throat> that's a walking bucket for real. Who I like to just watch play. Um it's my surprise, it's my surprise, folks, but I I was a huge mellow fan too. I just, Man. Like, I just like how he played, like Jazz. Yeah. He was so efficient with the least amount of dribbles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because after Kobe, man, my favorite, my players was, was D Rose. Man, D Rose is my guy. Yeah, D Rose was the true. I'm glad he would. I'm glad he better. But I'm mad that he with my Pistons because we ain't doing nothing for his career right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Melo and D and D Rose is my guys, man. Yeah. I love those dudes, man. I'm a big Melo fan, man. Huge. All right, man. This this uh your top three movies and top three TV shows. All right. Um. Three movies. Yep. Okay, so this is my favorite movie of all time. Like, and this gonna, okay. this gonna, this gonna shock everybody. My yeah. favorite movie of all time, meaning I can watch this mug right now. Yeah. Big, big Tom Hanks. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's yeah, my I remember that movie. movie all time, dog. Yeah. <laughs> so I can watch that no matter what. Um, another one, Shawshank Redemption is a that's is one of my junk, favorite man. joint. That's, that's one of my, my favorite movies joint. ever. Yeah. Um, a third one. Oh man, what would be my third one, dog? Um I just say uh I just say he got game. Yeah, he got game was a jump, man. I can't to this game. day, I can't like when I'm around people, I can't watch <clears throat> the end. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> when the, when the, when him and his dad had that that, that exchange. Okay. Yeah, though I can't like. You can't watch it. Me, like, I gotta go to the bathroom, and take a shower, man. Why like, you gonna tear up? It, th that movie and Pursuit of Happiness when he was inside Pursuit the bathroom. Of yeah, yeah. So so no so no he got game. Pursuit of yeah. Happiness, man. On that oh, man, that scene. Was, when, you on Pursuit of Happiness you when gotta, he was in the bathroom. You gotta, you gotta get in touch with your. Uh, Emotional side, man. If you gotta drop a tear, man, just drop that tear, man. Don't go to the shower. <laughs> man, on pursuit of happiness when he in the bathroom, bro, and they playing that imaginary game. I'm like, yo, dog. Yo, that was like that was a that was some best like that acting at him and even with Jaden being a yeah. kid, like that was that was some crazy, that was when, legendary. Like whenever I feel like my life is bad, I watch that movie, be like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, that movie is super good, man. That, that that's what, a good one. What about that's your TV shows? Uh, you got to go with Martin. Okay. Um, first Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. Um, a third TV show. <clears throat> Damn, G. Ain't going to be no, uh, no San Francisco in that thing. I oh, watched that last night, actually. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just almost that last night. Um, 
I don't know, man. I, I guess it's hard for me to pick that third one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I ain't got. I ain't got a third man, one. Man, I, you know, I was on Facebook the other day, man, and I was like, um, I was saying how like, duh. Oh, what up, man? What up? What up? What up, my? I was saying how it. You gotta have some some big kahunas to be Carl Winslow and Uncle Phil to rock the no hair on top. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy dog. Like, how do you do that? How do you like I'm not about to go out here? I'm bald here now. I'm not about to be like rocking the the the, the sunroof open, man. I'm not rocking. Not do it. Here's the thing, like, I don't, I don't, this is just this is just me. I don't respect, I don't respect men that do the fake um the fake hairlines, <clears throat> yeah, the fake hair. I don't respect men that uh uh dye in their beard. Like, I don't respect none of that, man. Like man. who you are, it's all that good. When I had to come out here off the dog, that was like, uh, I, cry, I, was, I was about to cry, dog. Like, dang. <laughs> yeah, like, man. Got, it, it, it is what it is. It's gone. Yeah. You know and the one thing I learned since I, I, I got bald head a lot of times, now when I go into coaching some kids that I don't know, I come in there with my hat off. So he just, mm -hmm. that's their first impression of me. Now, short story, dog. <laughs> with, my, uh, with my girls' team, I came in that boy with the hat on. Never took it off. So after a while, they like, hold on, what's under there? <laughs> so I told them, I say, I say, if y'all win, I'll take my hat off. Whenever y'all win a game, I'll take my hat off. Man, they won the game and they didn't care that they won the game. They went straight to me and told me to take my hat off. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny to the mug, dog. Man. Now we usually end it off, man. I'm not gonna put you in this situation, man. We always have like a, a high moment or a jump moment, but I'm not gonna ask you that question, man. Okay. So uh we're gonna end it off. The coronavirus, man, you know, we going through this right now. If you are, if they be like, the whole United States got to be on lockdown, you can't leave a house unless you're going to a hospital for two weeks. You got your family. What five items? You going to have five items. What's the five items you going to need in your crib? Now you coming with some questions, G. <laughs> oh, man. Just five items. You got your people, you got kids, you got family and stuff like that, but you got to, they are they, all right, well, you got these five items. And I'm not going to. I mean, of course, you're going to need food and stuff like that, so... Okay, so not just, like, food. Yeah, like, you, you, you got to oh, have your food. Okay, okay, and, cool, okay, cool. Just, just like, personal need, items you need to survive. I don't even need five, like... I just okay. need my laptop. Yeah. I need my laptops. I need my cell phone. I need some good Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. I'm Gucci. I don't <laughs> yeah, need yeah. nothing else. Hey, hey, for real, good Wi-Fi. <laughs> good Wi-Fi. That's all I need. I need my laptops. I need my cell phone. I need some good Wi-Fi, and I don't need nothing else. Man, I'm man, my man said water and noodles. Water noodles. So good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we tell Malcolm, man, my brother, man. I'm like, you are alone. You can survive off of water and noodles and bread, and you good. Good. Me, I gotta worry about my family. Like, if, if I'm hungry, we all hungry. <laughs> man, you know what I'm saying? So you know, people be eating too. Man, for real, my son's well, thirteen, and now he eating a half a box of pizza with me now. So what you said? You said you usually ended off a certain kind of way. The high, you said highs and lows. What was it? Oh no, no, no! I know you don't get down with uh with this like uh, it's a high moment or drunk moment. Oh, high or <laughs> drunk? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't smoke. But yeah. You know what? I don't smoke, but I've been drinking wine like every day. Man. I'm becoming a wine OG. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. A wine hangover is worse than a liquor hangover. I've never gotten, see, I've never gotten yeah. drunk off the wine. Because a, a wine would wine would give you the worst headache you had you would have in your life. Really? Yes. Oh no. See, I'm I'm like a glass or two. Yeah. And this is like maybe not every day, maybe like every other day, but I've definitely been getting my wine in, bro. Yeah. I've been on my yeah. wine. Yeah, like, I don't, so, I just, like, with this whole thing, I've never been the one, I don't know if you saw my Facebook, but I've never been the one to sip alone. But now with this whole pandemic, like, I gotta, the people in my house drive me crazy sometimes, you know? <laughs> so you gotta so sometimes, sip up. Sometimes some. I had to sip a little bit, man, and one night, man, I was just on IG Live talking stuff to people, and I forgot I had to go work the next morning. I'm like, oh, shoot, I gotta go work tomorrow. <laughs> like, let me go ahead and stop and go to bed. That's one thing too. My my uh my uh the time is off. You know what I'm saying? Like I be going to bed some nights at four thirty in the morning. Yeah, getting up yeah. at eight. You know what I'm saying? Like I was I was real sleepy. Yes, I took a bunch of naps yesterday. I, I got it in, but 
it's yeah. just crazy. The timing is off. This is a crazy time. I think yeah, man, back at this year, it's like, wow. This, we gonna be, we gonna be in the, in the, in the, we gonna be in books for school that they gonna talk about us, man. This whole year, this whole year, like it's been, yeah, it's been man, crazy. I think man. the last, last thing we had a pandemic like this was the Spanish flu, like nineteen eighteen. Nineteen eighteen, you know what I'm and saying? It, and it, it lasts almost two years, but like I was telling my um, fiance, because she was getting nervous about that. I'm like, you gotta think about the technology and the way we are now. We so much advanced. It might not last no two years, but it's definitely I feel it's gonna last this whole year, man. It's gonna def- it's gonna last the whole year, I think, as well. And then you're gonna also have, um, you know, once the fall comes, you're gonna also have it uh, come back. You know, what I'm yeah, saying? like like the flu does, right? So we definitely gonna, you know, gotta be precautious. Yeah. I, I gotta, just saw with China. I, I guess they went ten mask. days. Oh yeah, China just went ten days. I guess without any deaths related to the coronavirus. So that's a positive sign. So that's what's up. Oh, Hopefully, man. But yeah, before we got here, man, get everybody your uh your social platforms where you can find man, the, um, yeah. you and the grind machine. Yeah, check check the grind machine out if you are in the basketball. Know somebody that's in the basketball, um, a trainer, a coach, a player. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It's okay. Grind Basketball. You can find yeah, us man. there. Um, the website is grindbasketball.com. Um, everything is spelled properly, you know what I'm saying? So grindbasketball.com. And then uh for anything that I got going on, you know, obviously you can follow me at it's Maurice Elrod um on Instagram. And then mm-hmm. Wages of Sin uh series on Instagram as well. Um yeah. check out my projects. I got some more stuff coming up as soon as we're able to get out the house. And where can't you check the movie out? Like is it on like uh, yeah, it's, it's on yeah, it's on it's on Vimeo and YouTube right now. I'm okay. trying to get on Amazon Prime as well. Uh, I'm trying to get my streamers up a little bit. So, yeah, yeah man. Find me, yeah, find got, me to find it. The funny thing, man, you know, uh, just, I'm about to end it, but I was doing, um, <laughs> me and Q did a little thing, man, a little web series we started. It's funny, though. It's just a funny comedy, man. It's called Dog, You About to Get Married. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I, it just, I actually saw, I actually saw it come across your joint a couple weeks no no before this even happened this is like yeah, yeah. maybe three weeks ago month, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe a month ago maybe yeah yeah it's just just some funny stuff man because every time um um i talk to q he always be like dog you about to get married so i just took it and ran with it with a whole different concept and i just explained to the uh, fiance like listen the stuff i'm going to say in this thing is not true <laughs> i'm just acting so and i know in detroit you gotta have some humor for people to 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 get some attraction. So that's all it is. Like when we, I watched it, I, I watched it with her cousin. Man, she left the room. She got so mad. Like that's how you feel. Like man, it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> like when Dizzle watched him do his thing. I'm sure his wife don't go crazy on him. It just we just playing around, man. Just playing. This this is just for TV. Entertainment, yeah, man. And like I said, man. Like, um um after this, man. Later on tonight, this uh. Whoever missed the interview, this would be on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, and whatever else you listen to your uh your podcast uh, uh radio stuff at. Definitely send me the link. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Like I said, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. It was good talking to you, man. Yes, sir. My God, how we going? Stay corona, stay corona yes. safe, man. Yes, sir. You too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. All my people, go check him out. Follow him on his uh, social media and all his people. Come follow me, man. If you like podcasts.